Hello everyone and welcome to another Nations video. Today we are going to take a look at one of Red Dragon's most interesting minors, at least in my opinion, the East Germans. Now this is one of those decks that I would say that being a minor is quite interesting because most minors are limited in one way or another. I mean most of them um, usually lack some kind of tools. Maybe. They are weak because they have no good ATMs, maybe they are weak because they don't ga uh, get any interesting tanks, maybe they are weak because they have a shitty 8 force or they don't have any helicopters at all. So maybe you are lacking some tools, however the East Germans have tools for everything. Now, this is still a minor. Um, it, ha it may have uh, tools for everything, doesn't mean the tools are the best around. And that's the theme of this deck, a deck that pretty much covers all the bases you want, but in some cases those bases are covered by subpar stuff. That would be my... Yeah, my, my resume of, of the whole deck, but we are going to see it step by step. Let's start by logistics. <laughs> we have pretty much the, the standard stuff. A jeep, a um, couple of APCs and a command tank. Then you have some infantry, uh, in different transport options that we are going to see in the infantry section. A very nice transport truck with a huge supply capability and pretty nice availability too. And a supply helicopter, which ironically has less supply than the truck, but is a helicopter so can get anywhere much faster than the truck. Infantry. Now infantry is interesting because you have a lot, it's what I told you, you have a lot of different options, doesn't mean that they are the best around. Let's start with the flamethrower infantry, well, you have napalm thrower, not uh, flamethrowers, which is interesting and really good. In my opinion, napalm throwers are much better than flamethrowers. Then you have the reserve assassin, uh, which are the reserves, reservists of the East German <coughs> nation. And <coughs> quite honestly, they are cheap, but they are quite crappy. Because, well, the assault rifle is pretty much standard, but the rocket is crappy. Only 10 uh, AP power, and they get no machine gun at all. Still, they come in 15 units, which is kind of interesting. So, this is an... Yeah, you might want, might, might want to use this, but it's not really a great unit on itself. It has use availability and it's good for garbage and things, but other than that, and that they are pretty resilient because they are 15 strong, they are not that great. Now, moving on, line infantry. The curious thing about this year is that the light infantry is the later Susan. They are regulars, as you can see, training regular. <coughs> However, these guys are actually kind of the East German version of the Soviet Kornostrelsky. They have a Medis ATGM, which doesn't have a huge range, but it's, quite, it's a pretty nice ATGM on itself. It also has a PK, PKM um, machine gun and a assault rifle. So it's actually a pretty decent line infantry unit with a pretty interesting ATGM capability added. They, it's, it's, it's actually pretty good. Now probably the worst part about this uh, late case Susan is that you don't ca you can't use them in uh, mechanized or armored decks. That's the only problem with them. Now the motorist Susan would be the standard line infantry for the East German actually, because these are more like a mixed line infantry ATGM team. However, the motorist Susan th they are stock troops in fact, so they are extremely good. Uh, they have a CQC um, machine gun, which is really nice to have. A pretty good ATM, well, AT, AT rocket, this is not an ATM, and an assault rifle. But the, the important thing is that they are shock troops. So they have the rate of fire bonus and they have the speed bonus. This is a very interesting unit indeed. And uh, yeah, well, the transport we are going to look at afterwards. Then you have the Panzer Jaggers, which are regulars with only an assault rifle, 5 strength only, and a um, pretty decent um, anti tank rocket. But it's not just against tanks, I mean, Panzer Jagger, this technically is a tank hunter team. However, this 
rocket can also be used against infantry with area of effect of 280 power and 15 rounds per minute, which is extremely high. So at close ranges, maybe in woods, maybe in urban combat, these uh, units are able to destroy bigger line infantry units very quickly. These are really, really, really strong units and very interesting. So yeah. Then you have the special forces which are the FJB-40. Now, a lot of people swear by the um, British elite forces, the um, SAS, and that's because they have uh, they have everything. They have an AT rocket, they have an AA missile, and they have an assault rifle, so they are able to fight off almost everything they find on the battlefield. Now, the FJB is more or less the same, but in the Ger East German flavor. However, the problem is that while they get a pretty decent AT rocket, the Strela 2M, which is the AA missile, is crap. So this is kind of a bad version of the SAS. Still, they are pretty capable, they still they are elite, they are very fast. And they are quite good because the assault rifle is really good. However, the problem is that the AA rocket is uh, uh, bad. Just bad. I mean, 2100 meters against helicopters is bad. 30% accuracy is horrible. Um, 380 power is pretty unimpressive. So, while they are good, they are not exceedingly good. They are quite useful, however. Moving on, Mampals, the Strela 2. Well, the only good thing about this is that they are extremely cheap, but the missile is the same we just saw. It's really bad. So the man parts is uh, bad. Yes, bad. And then we have the dedicated ATGM teams, which are the Fagots. Too strong with a Fagot ATGM, which actually is pretty bad. Only 13 AP power, 40% chances to hit. Um, range is okay-ish, but honestly, uh, it's kind of bad, but as you can see you have mampals, you have ATGMs, you have ATGM infantry, you have line infantry, you have a, a special uh, elite infantry, you have tank hunters, you have reservists, you have flame throwers, you have everything. If you want a mampals you can get it, the problem is the mampals is not going to be really good. But this is kind of the flavor you are going to get with this um, deck. You have almost everything you want to wish. But doesn't mean that it's going to be really up to par or to quality. Now, as for transports, you get um, in different units, uh, well, some armored cars. Then you have the well, the German version of the BTR-60, the German version of the BTR-70, the German version of the BTR-50. Uh, then you have several different BMPs, which are pretty much the same as the Soviet counterparts. BMP-1s, with just the cannon, then the cannon and a Maliutka, the cannon and a, a Concurs. And then you have the BMP-2s with an autocannon, or with an autocannon and a Concurs ATGM. As for choppers, well, uh, in the motorist Stutzen you don't get them, but in the later Stutzen you get ME-24s and ME-25s. Remember that this is pretty much the uh, same as in the Soviet deck. Uh, these are not attack choppers, these are support choppers. And uh, you can see it in the in the weapons category. And the Fleita is mm, a very bad ATGM, so they are pretty bad against harm armor. And the autocannon is mm, pretty crappy as well. However, the rockets are really good. So these are really good to support landings and to kill enemy infantry units or soft targets. However, against enemy tanks, these are not attack choppers. Depending on what you are using, you can also get access to ME8 T's and ME8 TVs which is pretty much the same as, as what I said in the ME25s. They are not attack choppers, they are extremely good support choppers. So that's it for infantry support. Now in support, is probably the weakest part of the Germans is that they don't have good AA cover. They have a couple of good units for AA, but doesn't mean they get good all overall AA. Um, you get the German version of the um, Viriusa and the Silka. The Silka and the Viriusa are here, both of them. The Viriusa is a pretty decent unit, but 
nothing extremely good. Um, then you have uh, the Fasta 4, which is a pretty interesting unit because it has a Strela 3, which is not exactly the crappy thing you saw, you saw in the Manpals section. Has a little bit more range, still not a lot, has much better accuracy, and the truck itself is extremely fast on roads. So this is a good unit for openers to accompany your units while they are deploying to the forward zones. Out of that roll, uh, they are not really great. I mean, the range is really low. The accuracy is good, but the AC power is still inspiring. It's a decent unit, but not really great. Then you have Strela ones, which are honestly crap. The missile is not bad, it's not good, uh, and you only get four of them in the vehicle. Then you have the Strela 10M, which is probably, in my opinion, the best AA unit you are going to get with the East Germans. They have 12 infrared missiles, fire and forget, 50% chances to hit, decent range for the first time, and pretty good 5 HP power. This unit is actually pretty good. So, yeah, and, and probably this is going to be the cornerstone of your AA, because as you can see, the OSA is directly crap. This is a version of the OSA with only a 35% chance to hit, very low range for a radar guided missile. Um, this thing is really bad. And then you have the Cube M. Well, it's uh, not as bad as the OSA, still is pretty bad because it has a very low chance to hit. Uh, however, at least it has decent range and huge it's a power. So probably your air complement is going to consist in a mix of cubes, strela, and M's, maybe fastas or maybe uh, Bidusas. Up to you to decide. You have a tool for everything. You have um, fire and forget missiles, you have radar guided missiles, you have AA um, artillery, and you have a fast deploying um, unit as well. Again, tools for everything doesn't mean you get the best tools around. But still, while it's kind of mediocre, the AA of the East Germans is not bad, it's just mediocre. As for artillery, you have a um, mortar, pretty much straightforward. You have a couple of howitzers, which neither of them are really worth right home about, but still they get kind of get the job done. And then you have rocket artillery. You have the option to get uh, 20, uh, 122 millimeter launchers in the BM-21 or the RM-70, or 240 millimeter rocket launchers in the BM-24. These all are pretty decent rocket artillery units, and they come in good availability. So this is actually pretty decent for the East Germans. You have good rocket artillery. Um, yep, yeah, that's it for support. Let's move on to tanks. Now in tanks, you have the, the, the option, as you have with many uh, minors, especially in the, in the Pact or Red 4, to go nuts and spam a lot of crappy tanks like the T-34. This is still there, you can do it. I don't really like that, but hey, again, the option is there. Then you have two lines of tanks, the T-55 and the T-72. The T-55 is more or less the same idea as the T-34. The two first T-55s are pretty crappy tanks, but well, for their cost are okay-ish. They are super spammable, but yeah, they are not going to be world beaters. But of course, they come in huge numbers, that's the thing. <coughs> now, the T-55 AM-1 and the M A A uh, AM-2 are kind of different things. The 40 point version is a pretty good tank for its price. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's for 40 points, it's a pretty decent tank. And the other one has a Bastion ATM on top of the pretty decent uh, tank you had with the 40.1. So these are very interesting options, especially so the AM2PB with the Bastion ATM. This can be a really good um, tank for dealing with enemy medium tanks because of the range, extra range the ATMs give them, and also the AP power is pretty good. So yeah, pretty good unit for its cost. Then the T72 line, the 40.1 is actually worse than the T55 40 point. I mean, you get more um, armor, but the gun is worse. 
not as easily worse. Really, much, much, much worse. Um, so yeah, not really an inspiring tank. However, the T-72M for 50 points starts to be really interesting. And the T-72M1 is extremely good for 80 points. You get a top range gun with pretty decent accuracy, huge HP power, decent armor, a pretty good uh, machine gun, and the tank is pretty quick for what it is. Um, this tank is actually very good. And also it comes with very good availability. You can get up to 22 of those in two cars of 11 each in Harden or 34 if you are using Trainer. Uh, I would go for higher um, better RC, by the way. So for 80 points, this tank is really, really, really good. But the problem is that you don't get any anything bigger than this. Um, that's kind of a limit. However, you can be really effective with tanks, with these Germans. If you are used to, um, and if you know how to use these very good tanks for their price in their good numbers they come, you can destroy enemy bigger tanks just by the sheer force of your numbers. You are going to lose some, but they are much cheaper, cheaper than the enemy. So this is a very interesting unit, and the, probably the two stronger tanks are these two. The T-55 AM-2 and the T-72M-1. Probably will be the core of any, uh, all your armor in, in your decks. Recon. Now Recon you get a um, ME2, decent chopper, ME8R, R, which actually is an ME9, exceptional optics in that one, very good chopper. BRM1 Recon with exceptional optics, very good, very, very good vehicle. And then you have several different options for vehicles. You have uh, some armored cars here, some armored cars here, but really with the BRM1, these are a little bit you're not going to really use them. I mean, good optics and not great weapons. I mean, of course, they ha they come in good availability and, and 20 points. But I don't know. I, 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 I never use this stuff. However, the version of, recon version of the um, BTR-60 is actually pretty interesting because you get very good optics, very fast, all around. And um, the, uh, the weapon is not bad at all, so this actually is kind of interesting. But uh, especially so the BRM-1 is really, really, really good. Now for infantry, you get two options, the Grenzer and the Special Augflower. Now, there's absolutely no reason to go for the Grenzer. Absolutely no reason. First of all, the uh, Augflowers are faster. Second, they come with a machine gun. Third, the ATM is much well. ATM, the AT rocket is much better. As you can see, the AP power and the accuracy is a big difference. And uh, finally, they are both shock troops, but one of them has good stealth, the other has got very good stealth, being five strength both. So <coughs> this unit is extremely good. This unit is not that good, and it's only a five point difference. So, honestly, don't bother with the Grand Circle, with the Special Outflower. Vehicles. You get a pretty mediocre um, semi-AA uh, artillery with the Flag Panzer 75-2. I guess it's okay it's to support infantry or even to surprise some choppers or to support your AA. Not really great, <coughs> but it's not bad. Then you have an armor card, which is pretty much useless and, well, it's not even worth 10 points, in my opinion. And a very good flamethrower tank, with a main gun and a flamethrower unit. Then you have some jeeps, one of them with a recoil recoilless rifle, another one with fagot, 80 gems. Then you have um, BTR 2s uh, with uh, Maliut Capis or Concours. Probably the unit that is going to interest you the most is this one. The Concours missile ATM is pretty good and these come in very good availability. Up to two cars of eight apiece in top veterancy. So yeah, well the vehicle section is not really extremely good. But you again you get tools for almost everything, so I guess it's okay. Helicopters. Now you only get two options, but they are both really good. The first one is the ME8TV. With a Maliut Capi ATM, which is not great, is not bad, is okay-ish. A lot of uh, rockets, which are going to murder uh, infantry. 
a machine gun and only 45 points and a huge availability so this unit is actually pretty good for this cost of course and then you have the M35P which is actually a uh, M24 MB the Soviet one but whatever has Kokon air to ground uh, anti ATGMs extremely good missiles with huge range then you have a bootload of 80mm rockets with murder infantry you have a 30mm autocannon 10 strength armor all around and again in very good numbers so this is a really 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 interesting unit for 80 points is chopper this thing is really good so very interesting options for the helicopters and finally the air force now in the air force we start with the air superiority fighters now the first one is the mig 21 bis laser and I have a running joke with some members of the rap pack when we play together that this is an air inferiority fighter because it's so crappy. Now, that's not true. That, as this, uh, this plane is actually pretty good. First of all, you can get three of them in Elite, which is interesting on itself. It's not really expensive. Has six AA missiles, which while they are not great, they are not extremely bad either. Now, the thing here is that if you use this fighter against enemy Rafales or F-15Cs, you are going to lose them. However, if you use this against enemy bombers, or especially so against enemy choppers, they are going to murder them. Because six AA missiles, uh, fight and forget, short range, yes, they are very short range, but they are six, and you are fighting them with elite crews. So the 40% accuracy is much higher than what you would think, because elite gets a plus 34% accuracy. So that's pretty interesting. Now, the thing here is that, again, against other fighters which are better, you are going to lose this. But if you use this against what you have to use them, they are going to give you a lot of satisfaction. Then you have the MiG-23s, which in my opinion are not really great. First you have the MF with a medium range, uh, semi-active radar missile, which is pretty crappy. Only two infrared missiles for short range, not really great. Also it's slower than the MiG-21. So, no, not really a great uh, air superiority fighter. Then you have the ML, which comes with the same two mid-range uh, semi-active radar missiles, which are not great. And uh, this time you have four infrared missiles. However, still is not as fast as the MiG-21, and the turn radius is actually bigger, 400, while the MiG-21 is 350. So, yeah. Mm, still is not bad at all but finally you have the MiG-29-913 which is a really good fighter let's start by saying that it has an insane ECM rating for a fighter of 40% which is huge then you have two rather guide and guided uh, fire and forget missiles with very good range very high accuracy and four short range um, extremely good IR missiles so all around an exceptionally good plane, also 300 turn radius, which is awesome. You can get three of them in uh, Rookie, so it's uh, really interesting and very interesting fighter, really good one. So you actually have very good options for air superiority. As for pure bombers, you have a couple of MiG-17s, uh, one of them with uh, 250 kilogram bombs, the other one with 500 kilogram bombs. Uh, for what they are and the price they cost, they are okay. They are totally dependable units. You can throw them away, and if they kill something great, and if they don't, well, you didn't lose that much. So, yeah, nothing great, nothing bad. Then you have MiG 21 M's with Napalm. Now, uh, the problem here is that. Only two napalm bombs are not going to set a whole forest on flames, but still, it's a napalm, it's useful, so yeah, you might want to go with this. As for multi-role aircraft, I find this useful, uh, funny because none of these units is actually multi-role, but whatever. First you have a rocket launcher fighter, which is actually pretty decent. The rockets are pretty useful in destroying infantry on the open or uh, weak units in the open and has a couple AA missiles with are crap, so whatever. Then you have the MiG-23BN with uh, cluster munitions, 
So again, as you can see, you have a little bit of everything and options for all the roles. And finally, the SU22 M4, which in my opinion is one of the cornerstones of the East German Air Force, because it has two uh, ATGMs with 30 AP power. These things destroy enemy tanks so quickly you can't even imagine it. Now the problem is that they are really vulnerable. They only have 10% ECM and they are pretty slow. Really use these um, planes with a brain because if you, lo you lose them you're going to be in a huge disadvantage when the enemy big tanks arrive. And finally SIAD. You also have SIAD. Uh, the SU-22M4P, which is not the best SEAD unit around, is not the worst. Doesn't have huge ACM, is quite slow, has pretty decent uh, anti-radar missiles, so it's, uh, well, it's a average SEAD plane, but it's interesting that you can access to them. So as you can see, all around, you have tools for everything. Now, doesn't mean the tools you get are the best. It just means you have tools for everything. That's kind of the flavor of the East Germans. Now, which decks are better and worse? Which specialization goes go well with the East Germans? Well, let's see it. So here we are again in the creator deck screen. We have the East Germany. The options are motorized, armor, support, mechanized, and airborne. The motorized is interesting and is um, pretty cool and actually works pretty well if you are willing to give up your good tanks. I mean, you don't have access to the T-72M1 or the T-55AM2 with the ATMs. So if you want to focus on infantry, and you can do so, this is actually pretty interesting. The armor deck is really good with the Germans. Really, really, really good. Because you can get your top tanks and then a shitload of uh, maybe T-72Ms uh, which are 40 points are not well let's let's take a look um, let's let's simulate what we would do here to the here to here so this is the core of very good tanks for their price and now you can come bring all these um, still capable for their price tanks and you will have more than 100 tanks so it's actually a pretty strong thing. However, the problem is that you are giving up your late uh, Susan. So your infantry has to rely on the Fagots for ATM teams, which is kind of a bummer. And you also lose the FGB um, uh, Special Forces. But still can be worth it if you are good at using mid-range, uh, mid-priced tanks, uh, core of these tanks, flanked by this, uh, well, protection and uh, cannon fodder can be extremely, extremely, extremely uh, viable. Another bad thing is that you give up the ME-35s, uh, but you still have some pretty decent choppers with the ME-8s. So the armor deck is really, 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 really viable and nice to play with the East Germans. Now, Red 4, East Germany. Next one is support, and I will say that this is not worth it. And um, that's because, as we saw, you get choices for everything in your support deck. You get access to mortars, you get access to howitzers, you get access to rocket artillery, you get access to infrared missiles, you get access to radar guided missiles, and to self propeller artillery, uh, anti aircraft artillery. However, we saw as well that the support section of the East Germans is not really great. They have tools for everything, but the tools they get, they are not really great. So a support deck is going to suffer because of that, because you are there especially so to support other players with your AA and with your artillery. So the tools you would have to throw to the, to the battlefield, they are not that great. So I would say that support doesn't work work well with the Germans. Mechanized, it actually does. It's actually pretty interesting. However, it's not the case as with the Swedish that we saw that you can get almost everything uh, with a mechanized deck. You can get the FGB for this, but you are giving up the latest uh, Susan. You are giving up you are giving up no tanks. However, only the T34s, but 
Eh, who cares? And you are giving up your best helicopter, but you still have the M8, which is actually pretty good. So, um, is it worth it? Absolutely, yes. Yes. You can really uh, make a uh, East German mechanized deck and make it really, really, really good and viable and fun to play. However, you, are, you however you have to give up some stuff, something that in other decks doesn't happen with the mechanized decks. Still very interesting. And finally, the airborne deck, which I'm going to just say this. If you get all it is of your AA, Estrella was and fact, Fasta Force, yes, don't even try. The airborne is not an option for the East Germans. Sadly, it's not. So, well, that's the uh, overall view on the East Germans. A very, very, very fun deck to play, I can tell you, because I like playing them a lot. Usually people tend to um, underestimate them as well. They say they see East Germans and they say, who oh, crap. Well, no, believe me, no. The East Germans are actually pretty good if you know how to play it. Hopefully this video will help you uh, at the time of playing them right. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know which deck you want to see in the next. Remember, the next one is going to be Blue Force. So let me go and know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, hope you have fun, hope you learned something, and see you later!